is Miss Wallinade over here, ready for our next read aloud. This week's is a little bit long, um, but it's very informative. And as you can see, I have a shirt that has a few rings on it. It's actually backwards. I made this shirt last year for summer camp when we had our Olympic day um, because the summer Olympics are were supposed to be coming up this summer, summer 2020 in Tokyo. I decided our next read aloud would be in honor of the Olympics and next year when we're able to all be together again hopefully in class we'll go more in depth into the Summer Olympics but um, for now I wanted to read you this G is for gold medal it's an Olympic alphabet book and it gives us a little bit of a historical background on some things uh, about the Olympics the Summer Olympics and just so you know these rings are backwards I think I said that already but you know they should be like they're flipped upside down I ironed it on the wrong way but it's okay okay first word A is for ancient Greece and Athens that's our first letter the Olympics began then and there long ago and far away so in Athens Greece is where the Olympics began a long 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 time ago Ancient Greece was a collection of independent cities, and they were often battling each other. But once every four years, they stopped battling each other and agreed for one month to have athletes from all around compete. And that's how our first Olympics started. B is for a baron, Baron Pierre de Coubertin from France, who had the bright idea to give the Olympics another chance. This is the baron, and he wanted the Olympics to come back. You know, in 1896, he was able to see the first Olympics come to life in Athens, Greece. Most of the athletes in the first modern Olympics were Greek. From some were simply tourists who decided to participate. All were men. American triple jumper James Connolly became the first gold medalist. Before him, the last known Olympic champ was a boxer from 1,500 years earlier. C. C is for all the countries that come together to compete from Canada to Congo in winter or cold or summer heat. So obviously here we see the Canadian flag and some Canadian athletes. There were only about a dozen countries represented in the first modern Olympic Games in 1896. However, in 2008, the Summer Olympics in Beijing, China featured more than 10,000 athletes from more than 200 countries from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe, from A to Z. Some countries are so small that they send only a single athlete to compete. However, sometimes very small countries come up with very big wins at the Olympic Games. At the 1980 Winter Games, siblings Hani and Andreas Wenzel competed for Liechtenstein, a tiny European country with only 35,000 people in population. Together, they won two gold medals and two silver medals for skiing. D. D is for daring deeds of a decathlete. Ten events over two days is quite a daunting feat. How do you determine the world's best athlete? The decathlon is a good place to start. It measures an athlete's speed, endurance, strength, and jumping ability when it first appeared at the 1904 Summer Olympics. The decathlon was known as the all-around championship. It consists of 10 different events over only a two-day period. The first day's events are the 100-meter dash. That's a very fast run, boys and girls. You have to run really fast for 100 meters straight. Then there's a long jump, a shot put, a high jump, a 400-meter run. So all of these are part of track and field. The 100-meter dash is quick. The long jump means you have to run very quickly and then jump. Um, the shot put means you have to throw a very heavy ball on your neck. You know, and athletes hold it like this and then they spin and let go. That's the shot put. And the high jump means that they run and they ha try to jump over a bar. So the bar, it's kind of like doing the limbo, but instead of going under the bar, you have to go over the bar and jump onto a big mat. And the second day, they have to do um, 110 meter hurdles. That means they have to jump over these uh, 
metal and wood stands so they have to hurdle. Uh, maybe one of these days I'll make a film with all these events since I know a little bit about track and field. Um, they also did a discus throw, pole vault, javelin throw, and a long distance 1500 meter run. From 1964 through 1980, women competed in their own combined event contest, the five event pentathlon. In 1984, that became the heptathlon, which consisted of seven events. American Jackie Joyne Kersey, a two-time gold, gold medalist in the heptathlon, set the world record by totaling 7,291 points at the 1988 Olympic game. So they do a lot of different events. Kind of like a difficult sport, this one. E. E is for extinct events. There are dozens that are no more, like motorboating, rope climbing, croquet, and even tug of war they're extinct. They do not exist in the Summer Olympics anymore. Early Olympic Games included some events that might seem a little peculiar to some of us today. At one time or another, competitors could be found climbing ropes, driving motorboats, or participating in a tug of war. Sometimes sports that were removed from the schedule are eventually returned to it. Golf and rugby haven't been in the Olympics since the early 20th century, but they were approved as events in the 2016 Summer Games. So they, the first time they appeared in the Summer Games was 2016. F is for our Olympic flag. As you can see, the rings on the top are red, black, blue, green, yellow. I have them opposite, red, black, blue, green, yellow. See, they should have been turned upside down. So well, there you go, making mistakes. The five interlocking rings that are the symbol of the Olympic Games and make up the design of the Olympic flag were conceived by Baron Pierre, founder of the modern day Olympics. The rings represent the union of the five parts of the world that send athletes and compete in the event. America, which includes North and South, and in between two, Central. Europe, Asia, Africa, so America, Europe, Asia, Africa, and Ocean Oceania, Oceania, which includes Australia, New Zealand, and all the islands around it. The six colors of the flag, a white background, and the five rings of blue, yellow, black, green, and red are said to be those that appear on all the national flags of the world. During the opening ceremony, the Olympic flag is carried into the stadium and then raised on a flagpole in the arena. At the closing ceremony, the mayor of the city passes the flag to the mayor of the next host city. So every four years, a new host city is chosen to host in advance, way in advance. Um, so they start preparing. They need to create stadiums and, and have housing for the Olympic athletes. There's so many things that go into making the Olympics. I think I'm going to read half of the book this week, and next week I'll read the other half because it's going to be a long, long story, and I want you all to listen and pay attention. So can you believe, a little bit off topic, red, green, black, yellow, or blue are found in every single flag of the world. You'll find at least one of these colors. That's a good, something good to research. G. G is for the greatest athlete, according to a king. The guy could run and jump and throw. Jim Thorpe did everything. The star of the 1912 Olympic Games in Stockholm, Sweden, was Jim Thorpe, a Native American whose Indian name means bright path. He may have been the greatest all-around athlete in history. Thorpe, who also played pro football and baseball after the Olympics, won both the five-event pentathlon and the ten-event decathlon in 1912. Afterward, the king of Sweden told him, Sir, you are the greatest athlete in the world. Thorpe replied, thanks, king. And that's him right there. H. H is for the high jump, always a harrowing hop. Ha! They laughed at the inventor of the Fosbury flop. So remember I told you it's kind of like limbo, except instead of going under, you got to jump high over the pole. That's what it looks like right there. It isn't often that a kid can transform a sport. 
but that's what 15 year old high jumper Fosbury did in 1963. At the time, almost every successful high jumper used a style called the straddle, but it didn't work for Fosbury. So instead of straddling the bar, he jumped soldier, shoulders first and upside down, arching his back as he cleared the bar. His competitors thought he looked silly, like a fish flopping onto a boat. A photo of him jumping even appeared in newspapers with this caption, World's Laziest Jumper. Hmm. I, I, a quadruple jump? Impossible. Inspiring. What a test. I is for images on the ice that leave us so impressed. These are one of my favorites in the winter games, ice skating. Definitely one of my favorites. Tara Lipinski, my favorite ice skating athlete. The winter sport of figure skating, which includes ice dancing, pair skating, and women's and men's singles, actually began as an event in the Summer Olympics. Figure skating is both artistic and athletic. Figures skate to music, but they also perform incredible difficult spins, spirals, and jumps. The rare quadruple jump or quad is perhaps the most difficult, requiring the skater to make at least four revolutions in the air before landing. I can't even spin once before falling. Let's see. Ready? Miss Molinado is gonna do something silly. Hmm. So they are skating, 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 and then they have to spin. Oh, that was just one spin. Imagine doing four in the air and on ice and then landing without falling. Oh my goodness, that's why that's one of my favorite, absolute favorite sports of the Winter Games. So let's continue. J is for a joyous journey. All across the land, the Olympic flame is carried and exchanged from hand to hand. So I don't know how familiar some of you are with the Olympics, but if you're going to be with me the next few years at School 3, I'll make sure to inform you because it is one of my favorite events. Like I mentioned, the torch is passed on and it passes many places before it reaches the opening ceremony where a very, very um, respected person of the country gets to light the torch. The torch stays on during the entire time of the Olympic Games. So that's what makes it so special. The torch really is one of the most inspiring events and elements of the Olympic Games. The Olympic flame is lit in an ancient Olympia, Greece, and then carried in specially designed torches across the globe by thousands of different torch bearers in relays. So it starts every year, it starts in Greece and then it makes its way to the country that's going to host the Olympics that year. It's called a torch relay, not a torch run, because it's not always done on foot. Sometimes the torch is carried by swimmers and skiers and cyclists. Sometimes it has traveled by train airplane, helicopter, horseback, camel, car, canoe, sailboat, steamboat, snowmobile, and even a reindeer pulled sled. The torch relay is completed during the opening ceremony when a national hero lights the Olympic cauldron which burns throughout the entire competition and it's only turned off until the competition has ended. Now let's see if we made it halfway through the book. So there's 26 letters of the alphabet which means the last letter I should read is the 13th letter. So let's see if I did that. Count with me. A is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have three more letters to go before I stop this video. K. K is for kids everywhere who practice hard and dream of competing for their country and Olympic team. Most every Olympic sport organizes junior programs to help develop future stars. So all of you that love playing recreation soccer or swimming or gymnastics or dancing, someday you could be in the Olympics. Listen, if I had half the talent that some of you have, I would have wanted to be in the Olympics. At the age of two, Scott Hamilton stopped growing because his intestines weren't absorbing food. 
He was quite small, but he discovered that his size didn't prevent him from succeeding in figure skating, so he devoted himself to the sport of figure skating. Hamilton went on to win four straight United States championships and then an Olympic gold medal in 1984. He's one of my favorite Olympic figure skaters. And Sean White, which a lot of you should look him up. Sean White is amazing at snowboarding. Before he was even one year old, Sean White endured two open heart operations because he was born with a problem in his heart, known as a heart defect. The Flying Tomato recovered and became a snowboarding legend, winning gold medals in 2006 and 2010. I think he won a few more medals still after that. L. A long run starts letter L, then a launch, a leap, a landing. A little gymnast with a large heart, a gold medal, outstanding. L. Artistic gymnastics events have introduced some of the most famous Olympic athletes in history. Female Olympic gymnasts compete in four events. Another one of my favorite sports, but this one is in the Summer Olympics. Gymnastics. They compete in the vault, uneven bars, balance beam, and floor exercise. The men compete in six events, the vault, the floor, a pommel horse, the rings, the horizontal bar, and the parallel bars. Medals are awarded for a total team score for each apparatus and for the top gymnasts in the all-around competition. In 1984, Mary Lou Retton scored a perfect 10 to, be, to become the first American woman to win the all-around title. 12 years later, Carrie Shrug completed her second vault attempt despite having severely injured her ankle. She landed in great pain, but raised her arms in triumph, and the Americans won the gold medal in 1996. That is the first time I remember watching the Olympics, and I'm going to get teary because I remember watching that live on TV. I'm going to post some of the links of some of these Olympics so you can watch them, and they're like really amazing to watch. And I'm going to stop at letter M. A medal, that's our little letter M, you won. They're cheering loud. Stand for your national anthem and make your country proud. So when you win the medal, you stand at the podium. They give you the medal and the olive wreaths or a flower or something. And then you stand there and you watch your flag of your country get raised. And you stand there for the national anthem. And you know how I cry so much. Every time an American wins, I cry, especially this next guy I'm going to talk about. The swimmer, Michael Phelps, won an amazing 14 Olympic gold medals in 2004 and 2008, giving him four more than any athlete in history. Other gold-collecting Americans include sprinter and long jumper Carl Lewis, who won nine gold medals in the Olympic Games, Eric Hayden and Bonnie Blair, who were speed skaters. One of my other favorite uh, Olympic sports in the winter time is short track and Apollo Ono. You got to watch him race on skates and win gold medals too. All right, that's all for the first part of G is for gold medal. Next week, I'll read the second part for us, which will be letters N through Z and try to have a little bit more cool information on this. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you watched some of the links that I put on my website this week about some of the most amazing Olympic opening ceremonies, uh, the biggest American wins of gold medals in Olympic history, and more. If you have any questions, if you want to comment, uh, you can email me or write on Google Classroom and we can have a discussion on the Olympics. Okay, that's all for now. Next week I'll read the other half. Goodbye.